I grew up in a household in the 1970s and 80s where education was considered really important. My mother used to boast, jokingly, that she came second in the Leaving Cert in her class in school, and then she'd quickly remind us there were only two of them in the class. <laughs> My father, like many of his generation, never got to go to secondary school, but he was delighted in later life when he got to return to education. I thought I became a teacher because I wanted to make a difference. But really, it was because education was highly valued in the environment where I grew up and the school that I went to. You might think I'm crazy to go back to the 1980s to talk about the future of education. But a lot of what I learned about how education needs to connect started in the Presentation Secondary School in Kilkenny, where I went. There, I was introduced to human rights, to the campaign for nuclear disarmament, and issues about how war and peace were connected to the economy. I was introduced to how literature and poetry can act as tools for change. There I learned for the first time why education needs to connect us to people and the world around us. And we do talk a lot about being in a connected world. And we experience it through Facebook, through social media, globalization, through agreements like the Sustainable Development Goals. But in recent years, I've started to believe or to have a sense that we're more and more disconnected. I think of us being disconnected when I, when I think of all the people who are fleeing war and oppression, environmental disasters and poverty around the world, only to be met by a fortress Europe with its exclusionary policies. Or when I think about the talk of the wall in the United States or direct provision in Ireland. I think of us as being disconnected when I read the Oxfam Wealth Report, which charts growing economic inequality around the world today. Or when I think of how homelessness and job insecurity is buttressed by government policy here. I began to think, what kind of an education would we really need? If we really believed that our world was connected, if we believed that people were equal, that our planet was under threat and biodiversity needed to be nourished, if we lived with an active sense of the effect of the past and the present on the future, what kind of an education would we have then? When many of us think about connected education, we think about the internet, social media, online learning. I've learned over the years that we need to think about connection in a much, much deeper way. It's about how people relate to each other and how we live in this world together. It was in 1992, I'm going back a long time again, when I was on a solidarity brigade in Nicaragua. And it was there that for the first time, I learned about the importance of connecting people's real lived experience with the systems and structures and the power relations which affect them. One of the features of the trip, uh, apart from living in the countryside and working with local campesino farmers, one of the features of the trip was that we would learn from trade unions, women's groups, farmers' rights organisations about their analysis of what was happening in Nicaragua at the time. On one particular day, we went to visit a small collective, a small group of farmers in the mountains. Armed with my understanding of unequal global trade relations and the effect of US policy on coffee prices in the region at the time, I was really shocked to learn that the community representatives seemed to have no such knowledge. They expressed their dismay. Honestly, it was way beyond frustration at the low prices they had received for their coffee in the previous uh, season and its effects on malnutrition on their children. I have never forgotten it. But they never seemed to understand or they had no idea of why this was happening. This story for me sums up the importance of connectedness, of linking the personal with the political and the local with the global. When I think about connectedness in this sense, I think about the fact that those who were most affected by the world trade system and the coffee prices were disconnected from any understanding of why it was happening. 
those of us who had some connection to some knowledge of it, we were able to disconnect ourselves from their lived reality. We could get in our plane, come home, and we could do a little or a lot or nothing to raise awareness about the situation, not to mind to actually try and change it. Can you imagine how much better it would have been for that community that we met that day to have had access to learning opportunities which would give them an understanding of what was shaping their lives? Or to enable them to connect with other communities who had shared experiences? If it asks deep and difficult questions, if it connects people's real lived experiences together, I believe Critically connected education can help us to understand what's going on in our world and to give us the skills and the politics to change it. Recently, I undertook some research with those who are with educators involved in global citizenship and development education in Ireland. Among the many things I learned from them was the, the, the need for education to act as a, a safe space for reflection, a free-range space, one person called it, where people could reflect on their lives, on, on themselves, and on the, the implications of the system in which they lived. Most of the educators that I spoke to talked about the importance of not seeing people and situations in the world as somehow out there and separate from the same systems that affect us here in Ireland. As one person put it, we're all connected in that we live in the same planet, we share that planet, and we need to protect it for the future. What I really learned from them is that while connected education is critically important, it's also important that it is critical. This is education which encourages us to ask questions. To question why, for example, we continue to discriminate, stereotype and discriminate against travellers, asylum seekers, against people of colour, or people who identify as gay or trans or Muslim or Catholic or whatever. It asks questions why governments make promises and do little to realise them. Why we think charity is a good thing, but people coming into our own societies are a threat or why we have very short attention spans for issues of injustice. This is the type of education which supports climate strikes, like the one happening today, or treasure your t-shirt type of projects. No matter where it happens, it raises questions about overconsumption and our disposable society. But it also questions the policies which enable these. In a recent Social Justice Ireland report on the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, Ireland ranked 11 out of 15 countries studied in its action on sustainability and environmental protection measures. This is a reflection of our government's ability to disconnect policies and practices from their effects on the environment. And while many of us are aware of all of these questions and disconnections, I'd like you to think just for a second how our current formal education system, with its focus on points and qualifications, on league tables, and on competition for jobs. How, if it supports the status quo, as many critical theorists have told us over the years, how, if it is directed towards positioning us better in the global economy, how can it help us to question and to challenge inequality, injustice, and overconsumption? We need a new type of education, and many people are trying to realize it. And this is where connecting understanding and action comes in. Can you imagine what kind of an education we might need in order for us to really believe that another world is possible? To develop the practices, new practices, new better ways of be being and living and doing in our world. What kind of an education would we need if we were to transform our own societies? I remember many years ago, when I was a lot younger than I am now, I was teaching in a secondary school in Cork. And I was um, focusing or exploring the issue of uh, discrimination against travellers with some third-year students. And we discussed it, you know, uh, causes for it, the effects of it. And honestly, I didn't think very much about it 
afterwards, until a few weeks later. I was literally accosted in the staff room by one of my senior colleagues, a teacher, who berated me for putting ideas about traveller rights into the students' heads. Seemingly, one of my students had decided to take all this talk about injustice and discrimination seriously. And on the basis of a visit that she made to some travellers living locally, she wrote a letter in the pa to, the pa to the local paper complaining about their treatment in the town. She took it all seriously and she acted politically. She didn't believe that education was about what you talk about in class, but not what you do in your real life. She wanted things to be different, and she made every, every effort to make them so. Through critical and connected education, I believe we can begin to understand that our world is made by real people in real situations. We can begin to understand the economics and the politics and the beliefs which cause inequality in the first place, but with also those that can tackle it. Once we understand that poverty is not inevitable, that borders are temporary, and that rights can be fought for, we can start to create a new kind of living in our world. And the role of critical education is not to force or determine what kind of creativity or politics this might be. It's to create a space for people to find their voice, to make connections, and to realize alternatives, individually and collectively. And there are lots exa of examples of where people are trying to do this. Educators who are trying to turn education upside down, through learners becoming teachers, or through critical global education that challenges taken for granted assumptions and practices. There are examples of popular education coming together with activism. Issues like migrant rights and feminisms being connected, from hashtag Me Too to hashtag Refugees Welcome. But we need more of it. And we need much more than government rhetoric about the importance of global citizenship education or education for sustainable development. We need to completely rethink our approach to education as if our lives depend on it, because they do. The future of education is critical and connected. It's this type of radical education, I believe, which will enable us to respond respectfully, equally, and with humility to people, the planet, and the future. Thank you.